So this is it, our final mini set card review. We got six cards today, three Death Knight cards revealed by Chiomion and uh, three Warlock cards revealed by Legend Stuff. And let's kick things off here with what I think for me might be the best looking card of the entire set. It's Foam Render. This is a new five cost, unholy rune, single rune, five one weapon for death knight whenever your hero attacks spend three corpses to gain one durability so this is actually a couple things right number one this is you know a pseudo infinite weapon if you have the corpses to spend you're just going to keep gaining that durability and this is just going to hit for five every single turn now that can of course really grind people down with that um inevitable damage you know you chip in uh, the uh death knight hero card hero power and you're kind of pumping out eight damage per turn right that becomes this real clock on a game or you know just even sometimes that five damage weapon on the first swing can be like the lethal push in a faster deck particularly you know that second or third swing is going to be Pretty nuts if you're already pumping out a lot of damage in a faster, more aggressive deck. So this could be sort of a finisher, almost like the old Arcanite Reaper days uh, that we had long, long ago. So you can see this kind of in a grindy world, sort of a top end finisher world. And on top of that, of course, this has some corpse spending synergies as well. We have multiple ways the Death Knight is rewarded for spending corpses. Perhaps most commonly lately has been um, climactic necrotic explosion for uh rainbow death knights so this can help you pump up your big finisher there which you know that was often about finding certain damage breakpoints anyway as that starts to gain damage randomly you know you're putting in five on the foam render a couple times suddenly those breakpoints for your for your big finisher your explosion are get there a little bit faster perhaps because not only is foam render pumping it up but it's also helping you get those damage and health breakpoints uh into the right spots so for me I, this just looks like a really powerful option plays into specific synergies plays into proven decks honestly can be played across a variety of decks i think more aggressively minded decks and slower grindier decks as well as a finisher so this just kind of looks like the perfect do-it-all weapon for death knight yes of course weapon removal exists in hearthstone and yes of course you know weapon removal might feel a little bit worse about a weapon that can go infinite but like we said you get one swing out of this it's not a disaster you know spending five to deal five isn't great but it's not a disaster and of course your opponent made a suboptimal line too Weapon removal has never stopped good weapons from being good in the past, and that certainly won't be the case with this one either. Uh, not to mention, you can run two of these. <laughs> so they have two weapon removals. <laughs> Figure that out. So uh, you may not want to run two necessarily because, you know, it can go infinite. It might feel wasted, but you might also just so you have some redundancy helping you find it more reliably. So we'll see where that goes on deck building. But all in all, I still think this weapon is absolutely nuts. Really good fit for Death Knight in a variety of ways. And... Probably for me, the strongest card I've seen yet in this entire set. So moving on here, we have uh, the first of a couple cards, I think kind of designed for more hand buff stuff. And uh, man, they've really been pushing this hand buff package a little bit in Death Knight, particularly in the last set, as I recall. But um, the hand buff cards haven't really gotten there as of their own archetype. Like we're not seeing hand buff Death Knight being a meta deck right we were seeing rainbow and plague death knights take the prize and there might be you know some some hand buff-esque cards that pop into those from time to time particularly rainbow death knight but not that like full in build with double blood single unholy that a lot of these latest uh hand buff cards have encouraged and i don't really see that changing here with helm of humiliation it's kind of cool right this is a net gain of like 10 10 in stats right if you remove a 5 5 with this and you gain 5 5 in hand but as is always the case you know it's a little bit slow a little bit clunky with this hand buff stuff as i talked about all every single card review for death knight last uh, time for the full expansion release i was like you know these hand buff cards they, you got to play them then you got to play the card itself then you got to wait another turn for the card to attack in many cases or to interact on board so there's kind of like this like three turn lead up almost where your hand buff stuff actually goes from you spending the mana to the hand buff being relevant on board and you know, sometimes rush and taunt can can help accelerate that pace a little bit and this of course because of the removal accelerates that pace a little bit too but keep in mind you know very often you'll like be staring down a board of like three three threes or something 
And Helm of Humiliation on turn four just won't feel that good. You'll like remove one three three, so you're not even getting like the max efficiency on the removal. And then again, what's the hand buff gonna hit? Does it hit the taunt in hand? Does it hit something else random? Would you rather disperse those stats widely across your hand just to, to kind of ease things out? What if it hits a high cost card and you can't play it for three turns? There are all these sorts of hesitations that start to come into mind. And yeah, you can imagine high rolls too, right? Like you hit um, the, the taunt guy that, that copies himself twice and it's like, boom, okay, this was worth 15, 15 from a single buff. But you also have to counter with the low sides because, you know, you're not always going to hit those high rolls. And there's going to be moments where this just feels awkward. And I think that's the problem for that deck in general. It's just kind of pacing and rhythm and getting things out quickly enough. And then the consistency issues on top of that. So Helm of Humiliation does look a little more immediate and impactful than some of these hand buff cards we've seen where it's literally just like spend mana and hand buff. Those really feel slow. So I'm like slightly more positive on this one than some of those, but I don't think this does enough to push that entire archetype, particularly because, uh, you know, when we're working with this rune system, you kind of have to commit because you got to go double blood for this. And is this, is this enough to push that entire archetype into relevance? I just don't see that. And I, I don't think our next card is going to do that either necessarily. This is the toy snatching Geist. Uh, this is on the single unholy sides. This one is ultimately a little more flexible. It doesn't have to be in a hand buff double blood deck, but it could be. And it makes sense in it. It's a three minute two one undead with Gigantify and Battlecry. Discover an undead, reduce its cost by this minion's attack, which at a base level, you're probably not particularly excited about. You're spending three to get a two cost discount, which sort of feels like playing a one mana two one you know not not the best result and i will say too like discovering an undead it's gonna feel like a mixed bag which i guess is appropriate for this particular character and his artwork since he's holding a bag but you know you're not gonna get like crazy stuff and rarely is gonna feel like you get like some perfect you know like oh i got a six drop that i discounted by two and now i'm playing it on turn four and it's just like oh it's amazing and that'll happen sometimes but you know a lot of times you're gonna get a bunch of little junk that you don't really care about so to make this card feel good, you probably want to hand buff it because of course, as you hand buff it, then the discount starts to really uh, make an impact. Cause if you buff this up to like five attack and you're getting a five cost discount on a three cost card, then you can do some pretty sneaky stuff. So it creates a scenario where like this could be kind of a tempo swing almost for um, uh, hand buff decks where, you know, you're like, you're getting this buffed guy down. So you're getting like a pretty solid body base and then you're maybe cheating a little bonus you know five drop into play for free or something could be even bigger right and then of course we've got the gigantify side of it as well so the gigantic version starting as an eight mana eight eight uh that's definitely going to give you a discount that you care about because it's already eight attack you won't really need to hand buff that one uh but then the question is like are you going to get the big enough undeads consistently enough to make it feel like it's worth it because just playing the eight mana eight eight is not a good feeling right that's not going to feel awesome Nobody wants to pay like a full cost giant. Uh, so, you know, if you get like three, three drops, you're like, oh God, I spent eight mana to just discount a three drop and these three drops suck. And undeads in particular seem to be like they're biased towards lower costs. So yeah, sometimes again, you'll hit that eight drop or something and you're like, yes, I get an eight drop to go with this. But I even challenge that notion that is like, is an eight, eight and a random eight drop undead that's free with it is that actually a good Hearthstone play these days on turn eight? I don't really think so. Uh, the kind of bonus 8-8 uh, eight eight here on top of a regular eight cost card, you know, you're trying to do much more interesting things often at that stage of a game, like real win conditions, real advances of game plans. Other people at that range are playing like Odin's and Reno's, and I know those both cost nine, but you get the idea. Uh, they used to cause eight. Those are the sorts of things we're doing in Hearthstone at that stage. And it's like two just like random bodies on board just isn't going to feel worth it to me. So I really think the only scenario where this feels great is like you've hand buffed the first half of the Geist to a pretty big level and it hits something bigger than it should normally be able to get. And that creates a little nice swing on board. But again, that relies on your hand buff package being good. And I don't think this is good enough to push hand buff into relevance. So the question for both these cards really becomes like, is this just the final wave of them trying to make some kind of double blood hand buff deck work? Or is this still just kind of laying the groundwork and they're just going to keep hammering this home? 
Because if they keep hammering at home, I could see both these cards being reasonable. But if they give up on this archetype and move on to something else, and this was their kind of last chance to make these relevant, then I don't think these will get there, right? So these are kind of living in that space where it's almost up to how hard they push this synergy and how fiercely they go after this. Often in my experience, they kind of give up on these after the mini set. So I don't know if we'll see these in future sets, which might doom both of these cards. But I do think Helm of Humiliation's a solid option for sure. And there are worlds where the first half of Geist looks solid to me too. So not the worst versions of these hand buff cards we've seen. And I did initially have some hope for this archetype. It just hasn't gotten there yet. So moving on over to uh, Warlock here, we have Infernal. It's a new four mana, six, six demon. It's got Taunt and Battle Cry. Set your hero's remaining health to 15. So this is kind of that uh, one-sided Alexstrasza. You, <laughs> you can't use it against your opponent, but you can use it for yourself. So two ways to think about this card, right? Number one is like, you could play this on turn four for a pretty big body on board. Uh, you just might be costing yourself 15 health which, uh, you know, in normal circumstances, you'd rarely think was worth it. But do keep in mind, uh, we still have uh, pain warlock stuff. And assuming this works like Alex Raza, where the number is red, it doesn't say like set your hero's max health to 15. It says remaining health. So I think this should work with Molten Giant. It's going to look like you've taken uh, 15 damage in this case. I think Molten Giant will get discounted. There's also the other guy, uh, what's his name? Some kind of infernal or something, isn't he? What's he called? It looks like a big, big insect. Uh, I think he's nine mana. Oh, here we go. The imprisoned horror. You have a big insect guy, right? Like cost one less for each damage you've taken. I think again, I think this will work. Like this should just immediately discount your horror to zero as far as I can tell. So that's a pretty good swing, right? Like a six, six and a four, four. So this could be like a crazy enabler in a pain warlock deck there are some pain warlock decks getting played right now in tier two so could this be a little bit of a you know kickstart for that deck to get even better i think that's a possibility the alternative of course for this is that using it for a heal you can uh save yourself you know go down to two on a turn your opponents push you really far and this is a sudden really cheap way to heal back up to 15. I can remember instances in classic Hearthstone where you would happily sometimes play that Alexstrasza to heal yourself. You'd get really low in a handlock, play Alexstrasza to recover a little bit, get out of range of uh, some druid combo, which used to do 14 very often, and uh, get yourself to 15 and feel safe. Infernal can do that same sort of thing much, much cheaper, which, you know, at four mana, that's pretty easy to weave into a turn, also stabilizing behind this taunt. So I actually really like this as a defensive sort of tool. Uh, an aggressive hunter has started to chip you down. You're down to like seven or eight and you're feeling really scared because that kill command might be there. So you just pop back up to 15. You heal, you know, seven, eight health for four while developing some great stats. Like that is an awesome defensive tool. So uh, you know, I think Pain Warlock has potential and I think like Control Warlocks might also love this. It is one of those cards that it's kind of got that friction because if you're not below 15, it could get sort of stuck in hand and feel a little bit dead or you might feel pressure to play the taunt and hurt yourself a little bit from time to time, um, which is kind of scary. But in your control deck like that, and particularly Warlock, you often have enough cards in hand. You're drawing enough that you have kind of enough choice. You don't necessarily need to be able to play every card at every turn for it to feel like you have plenty of options. So I think you could still sustain that sort of friction, tank through that and uh, use this in some pretty exciting ways. When you do get low and need a super cheap, super big heal, this exists for that. All right, so Domino Effect is up next. Pretty cool little spell. Three mana, deal two damage to a minion and then repeat to the left or right, dealing one more damage each time. So. Here's how this is gonna work. It's kind of like the old rolling fireball. Uh, let's say your opponent has five minions on board and they have a two, two on the left and a three, three next to it. And you know, it increases up to a five, five on the end, right? That's your perfect scenario. So you're gonna target the first minion. So you pick the two, two, of course, on the far left. Now, although this says repeat to the left or right, because there won't be anything to the left of the farthest left minion, it's gonna default to the right and it's gonna roll up incrementing each time, killing the three, three, and then the four, four, and then the five, five in sequence. Now, alternatively, uh, if for some insane reason you decided to pick um, the four, four instead, which has an option to the left and the right, it could hit the three, three to the left or the five, five to the right, 
you would deal two to the four four and then it's going to randomly decide which one to roll to next it could roll to the three three and deal three and then roll to the two two and deal four which of course again this would be silly you'd have no reason to do this but it could also miss and kind of roll to the right and deal three to the five five and you know you'd be very very sad so basically um positioning matters a lot for this one so where it gets really tricky is when that two two is in the middle and that's the one you want to start with and then there's a three three to one side and a four four to the other side that's when it kind of matters on on this uh left or right and it's like oh man i hope i get uh hope i get lucky and it picks the right side here so there is going to be some calculation on certain board space states just depending on how things are laid out and how minions are arranged you're gonna have to make some tough decisions from time to time other times it may not matter much um, the real question is like, does this just have enough output? Does this like do enough? That's where I've got some questions for this one. Like, I don't think this necessarily scales very well into the late game. I think there's going to be some really awkward states for it. And just like, wh what's this going to do against like a board of five fives, you know, or like they got three, two five fives on board. It's just like, yeah, man, I dealt two and three to them. It's like, I need more help to deal with this. I just rather have one card that cleans something up really cleanly and decisively. Um, I mean, yes, a board of two twos, you know, you know, that's going to get wiped out. So that's cool. There are shapes where this certainly looks a little bit better, but it falls off pretty fast numerically because a board of three threes, like one of them is going to get left behind, right? The first one you hit isn't going to die. So I don't know. I feel like Warlock just has so much good, cheap removal. We've still got things like Defile as well, which is kind of like this card and they kind of technically sort of could go together as well. Uh, but at the end of the day, I don't know, man. I just don't think this one has the upside potential necessarily, nor do I think it, it's like super efficient, uh, nor do I think it's good against like a variety of board states. It's just not that decisive in how it removes things. So to me, it's like, it's okay. You know, it's just another removal tool for Warlock. I guess there could be metas, you know, if there's like a treant meta, for instance, where there's a bunch of two twos, this card becomes really solid. If there's other metas where there's things that are three, three and bigger, this one might be a little bit harder to line up. Well, might feel like it's kind of leaving things unfinished, which could be a problem for a class that otherwise just has really good, strong base removal. And then our final card here is mass production. Uh, this is a one minute spell, draws you two cards. It deals three damage to your hero and then it shuffles two copies of this into your deck. So, of course, eventually your entire deck can be mass productions and, um, boy, you can take a ton of damage, which in standard right now um, isn't too scary. Again, you know, we have seen some pain stuff. This could be a way to, to advance some of that pain warlock things. We also have ways to mitigate damage to yourself. So, you know, this could just be a one mana draw two where you're not really taking a lot of damage. And in many cases, at the start of the game, if you're just looking for a lot of cards, you might be willing to take that three damage anyway. It's like, yeah, it's just three, whatever. I'm just going to get some super efficient card draw. You just have to be careful because you get too many of these in your deck. It's like you're getting good choices now, but you might be getting worse cards later. There's some kind of tipping point where you've pushed things too far and your deck is just all mass productions. And now you're paying, you know, one mana and three damage as a tax every time you want to try to find a real card in your deck. But, you know, maybe one or two early wouldn't be all that risky in any deck that just needs to splash some, some damage. Then you've got that upside on the three damage. Now, I'm not going to talk about wild format because we don't do wild format in these reviews. But of course, this looks terrifying to me with the old Stormwind quest line. My God, I don't even know Wild's so scary. I'm not even sure that's good anymore, but I can imagine that being crazy, just constantly cycling through these, always taking three, dealing three to the opponent. It does stop fatigue though, so maybe fatigue's better for that deck. I'm not sure. Uh, but anyway, in standard, I, I think this actually is kind of like sneaky, interesting. There's enough ways to mitigate this, enough ways to take advantage of this, and enough ways to just ignore the downsides that this is probably a good card. All right, so that's it. Let's move on to some quick reviews. Foam Render is a five-star card. Helm of Humiliation is a three-star card. Toy Snatching Geist is a three-star card. Infernal is a four-star card. Domino Effect is a three-star card. And Mass Production is a four-star card. And there you go, folks. That's the mini set. Um, I think there's some interesting stuff. I'm excited about a handful of different decks trying these out. Maybe we'll finally get hand buff to go through, man. I hope so. It seems fun. I'm hopeful for it, but I don't know if I trust it quite yet. Curious if you guys like these cards as much as me. Do you think the foam render is insane or am I silly? Share all those thoughts and more down below and stay tuned for um, yeah, soon. The next three or four days, we'll be playing some decks. So I'll try to get quite a few videos out if I can. Um, I'm going to try some some foam death knights. Does this, does this foam weapon, is this going to get nerfed? <laughs>
<laughs> it's a nerf it's it's nerf get it anyway love, love you guys thanks for hanging out as always uh stay tuned for those videos and until next time game on